Hey everyone, this is Nisha Chauhan and you are watching Scienceaholic. In today's video, we will be discussing about the previously unimportant question and answer of the chapter number 4, that structure of an atom. So these old questions are very important as an exam point of view. So in last video, we have discussed about the MCQs of this chapter. And if you have not seen that video, you just go on my channel that is Scienceaholic and you can watch. So let's start the video. These are question and answer. Question number one, explain why isotopes differ in their masses. So the answer, the isotopes, what are isotopes? Isotopes are having same atomic number but different mass number. So the isotopes differ in their masses because they differ in their mass number. So one, two, three respectively. So let's take the example of this hydrogen isotope. So this is the protium, this is deuterium and this is tritium. So these are the isotope of hydrogen and you know that you can see here in the superscript 1, 2 and 3. These are the mass number of the protium, deuterium and tritium. And 1, 1 and 1. These are the atomic number of these three. So it means because the mass number are different, that's why they are different in their masses. Now come on to the question number 2. What are valence shell and valence electron? Now you know that the valence shell is the outermost shell in an any atom. So the electron present in it are called valence electron. And valence electron is also called outermost electron. So this is question number 2. Now come on to question number 3. The atomic number and mass number of an element are 16 and 32 respectively. Find the number of protons, electrons and neutrons in it. State its valency. Is this element a metal or a non-metal? Justify your answer. This is very important. So question number 3. Answer number of protons is equals to atomic number. Now you know that the atomic number is equals to number of proton. So here they have given atomic number 16. It means the number of proton will be 16. Now number of electrons is equals to atomic number again number of electrons is also equals to atomic number so again number of electron will be 16 now the number of neutron is equals to mass number minus atomic number so the mass number minus atomic number so the mass number will be 32 and minus atomic number that is 16 so 32 minus 16 is equals to 16 and if you want to learn how to calculate the mass number, you can see I have given that video in I button. Electronic configuration of the element will be if the atomic number is 16, what will be the electronic configuration? First shell, 2, second shell, 8 electron, and the last shell, how many electrons are left? 2, 8, 10, 6. So that 6 will go in last shell. So the valency. What will be the valency of this? So 2. It means 286. It means this shell needs 2 more electron to complete its octet. It means the valency of this element will be 2. And you know that the property of non-metal is to gain electron. So this will be a non-metal. This way you can explain the element is a non-metal since it tends to gain electrons and not lose electron. So this will be a non-metal. Come on to the question number 4. What are the number of protons, neutrons and electrons in cobalt and silver? Now this is the mass number, superscript and subscript. This is the atomic number. Let's see how the element, mass number, atomic number, number of protons, number of neutrons and number of electrons. Now cobalt the mass number 59, atomic number 27, number of proton will be is equals to number of atomic number. So the answer will be same. Now the number of neutrons is equals to the mass number minus atomic number. So the answer will be 32. So this will be the number of neutrons and number of electrons is equals to atomic number. So atomic number will be 27. So number of electron will be 27. This way we can calculate. So let's see for silver. Mass number 108. Atomic number 
47 they have given if the atomic number is 47 it means the number of proton is equals to 47 so the number of neutrons formula will be mass number minus atomic number so the answer will be 61 so this is the number of neutrons number of electrons 47 because number of electrons equal to atomic number so the answer will be 47 this way you can calculate any proton neutron and electrons of any atom let's see Question number 5. The K and L shell of an atoms are completely filled. Find the number of electrons present in it. State the name of the element. Now they have given that K and L shells are completely filled. Find the number of electron present in. We have to find out the number of electron. And we have to tell, state the name of the element. We have to tell the name also. So the number of electron K shell 2. L shell 8. Stuter will be 10. If any element is having 10, it means that will be neon. So the element is neon, that is any. Coming to the question number 6. How are canal rays different from electrons in terms of charge and mass? Now you know that the canal rays are positively charged rays. Canal rays are basically anode. Anode means positive charge rays, which consist of protons. For the charge and mass of protons, for the comparison of canal rays, and electrons in terms of charge and mass. So it means canal rays are positively anode rays. Come on to the question number 7. Atoms of an element has one proton, one electron and no neutron. Name the element. We have to tell the name also. How will you represent it? So if the element is called protium or hydrogen. What it called? Protium or hydrogen. It is the isotope of hydrogen. Because isotope of hydrogen is having only one proton and one electron and no neutron. So this is protium. So this way we can represent protium. Come on to the question number 8. Write the two postulates of Thomson's model of an atom. What were the drawbacks in this model? Now an atom may be regarded as a positively charged sphere in which protons are present. The negatively charged electrons may be regarded as a stud, studded or embedded in this sphere. So this is the postulates of Thomson model of an atom. Come on to the question number 9. Name the scientist and his experiment to prove that nucleus of an atom is positively charged. So the scientist is Rutherford that has taken out the experiment and the experiment is known as alpha particle scattering experiment. So this is about question number 9. Let's see question number 10. How many electrons can be filled in the third orbit of an atom at the maximum? Now you know that first shell can occupy 2 electrons, second shell can occupy 8 electrons and third shell can also occupy 8 electrons. So this way the third orbit of an atom can have maximum of 8 electrons. Question number 11. List the observation in alpha particle scattering experiment which led Rutherford to make the following conclusion. So center is positively charged. We have to elaborate the center is positively charged. Positively charged. Alpha particles have positive charge. Since they were repelled or reflected back, the obstruction must also carry same charges. That is positive charge. Similarly, charged particle always repels each other. So that's why the center is positively charged. Come on to 12. An element is represented as 16,8x. Find the number of neutrons in the element x. Now this element we have to find out. Neutrons we have to calculate. The number of neutrons in the element will be the mass number minus atomic number. This is the mass number. This is the atomic number. If we will subtract, we will get number of neutrons. So 8 will be the neutrons in this x element. So this is about question number 12. Let's see question number 30. An atom has two electrons in M shell. What is the atomic number of the element? K and L shell of the atoms are filled and M shells has two electrons. Now, this is total number of electrons in the atom. First shell 2, second shell 8 and the last shell 2. So 2 plus 8 plus 2 is equals to 12. If any element is having 12, atomic number it means that is magnesium so the atomic number z of the element is equals to 12 this way you can calculate let's see question number 14 
write the electronic electron distribution of oxygen atom how many valence electron does it have we have to write the electronic distribution of oxygen now you know that atomic number z of oxygen is 8 so electronic distribution is equals to first shell can accommodate two electrons and second shell accommodates six, six electrons so two six this is the distribution and the last shell electron it's called valence electron so it means six will be the valence electron or valence electron of oxygen so this is question number 14 let's see question number 15 which has more number of electrons sodium or sodium plus or cation this is called sodium cation and why we have to explain electronic configuration of sodium and any positive that is sodium cation are given as follows now you know that this atomic number of sodium is 11 so how we can distribute these 11 first shell 2 second shell 8 and the rest will go in third that is m shell so this is for sodium na now let's see for na positive that is sodium cation z equals to 11 same atomic number first shell can accommodate two electron second shell can accommodate eight electron and because this sodium has given one electron loses one electron that's why no electron will come here so any positive ion is formed when sodium atom loses one electron so and that is called cation sodium cation therefore sodium atom has more electron that is 11 and any positive ion has 10 electron because this one it loses that's why 10 so this is about question number 15 question number 16 write the names of three elementary particle which constitute an atom now you know that three elements part elementary particles which constitute an atom electrons that is e proton that is p and neutrons that is n so these are the three elementary particles so this is about question number 16 let's see question number 17 if z is equals to 3 what should be the valency of the element also name the element we have to tell the name of that element so now z is equals to 3 and z is atomic number and 3 now you know that if the atomic number is 3 how we will distribute these three electron in the shell first shell can accommodate 2 and the rest one will go in l shell that is 1 so so what will be the valency one so name of the element is lithium and this is the electronic configuration of lithium this way you can tell the electronic configuration and valency now question number 18 write the distribution of electrons in the carbon and sodium this is the ncrt textbook for class 9 science page number 50 this is the question of page number 50 you, this is for carbon atomic number of carbon is 6 now you know that the atomic number is equal to number of proton so the number of proton will be also 6 and the number of proton is equal to number of electron. So the number of electron will also be 6. So distribution of electron, first shell can accommodate 2 electron and the second shell can accommodate 4 electron. This way you can distribute the electron in carbon. Now let's see for sodium, atomic number is equal to 11. So the number of proton is equal to 11 and that is also equal to the number of electron because Atomic number is equals to the number of proton is equals to number of electron. So distribution of electron will be K shell can accommodate 2 electron, L shell uh, can accommodate 8 electron and M will accommodate last 1 electron. So this is the electronic configuration for sodium. So let's see the question number 19. This is NCRT textbook for class 9 science page number 47. If an atom contains one electron and one proton, will it carry any charge or not? We have to explain. The atom will be electrically neutral as one negative charge balance one positive charge. That's why the atom will be electrically neutral. Come on to the question number 20. Name the three subatomic particles of an atom. We have to tell the subatomic particle. The subatomic particles of an atom are first protons protons are always positively charged that will be in the center of the atom electrons that are negatively charged particles and that are revolving around center of an atom and neutrons are no charge 
neutrons are having no charge so this is for all today if you like this video please hit the like button and do subscribe my channel sign so holly bye for now